On this episode of the Throttle Out, we're making a wish come true by doing a TJ build for the Make-A-Wish Foundation for a great kid named EJ, so check out the build. I'm Ryan from ExtremeTerrain.com, and in this very special episode of Throttle Out, we're going to be completely redoing the TJ behind me. This Jeep belongs to Earl Jr., and EJ is the recipient of a wish through the Make-A-Wish Foundation. That wish was for us at Extreme Terrain to completely redo his Jeep for him. Now, this is an older TJ. This is an O2. It needs some normal restoration stuff, which of course we're going to be doing, but we're also going to completely change up everything else about this Jeep as well. Big lift, wheels, tires, lights, interior, exterior, everything you can imagine for a very deserving kid. Now, with this being an older O2 that spent most of his life up here in the rust belt. I'm sure we're gonna have some rust to contend with. This is probably gonna be one of the tougher builds that we've done, but it could not be for a more deserving kid. So let's tear into this Jeep and get started with the build. As you can see, Tony's been hard at work getting this thing stripped down to only the bare essentials to transport it over to the paint shop. This is going to get all of the body work done as well as the paint work. And while it's away, the interior is going to get its treatment as well. Once it comes back, we're gonna start working on some of those bigger mods. We just got the Jeep back from our local shop, Malvern Collision. They did an awesome job hitting the interior and the exterior of this Jeep with a black bedliner material, which is exactly what EJ wanted. They also sprayed the sport cage with a gloss black because we're gonna be doing some gloss black accents on the exterior of this Jeep. The bumpers, the fenders, a few other things like the light brackets, they're really gonna pop off of this mat with having a gloss finish on them. We also got the interior back from the upholstery shop. That of course is also black with some red accents, exactly what EJ was looking for. Now let's get this thing up on the lift and we'll start stripping the old suspension out of it. We got the Jeep up on the rack to start with some of the suspension upgrades, but before we started tearing the old suspension out, we found a couple of issues with the frame. Tony started poking around and we found a lot of soft spots, not just one or two. I think this is beyond repairable and we're going to have to swap the frame. So not gonna be great for our timeline, but it is going to be good for EJ. He's going to be getting a Jeep that is way more solid than what he dropped off. As you can tell, Tony's been hard at work tearing the Jeep apart, getting it ready for that frame swap. The frame is still on its way, but in the meantime, we've taken the opportunity to do some general maintenance to the engine as well as some cleaning up of some things. We've got the tub completely undercoated, as you can see, got some fresh paint on the transmission, also have a bunch of the other parts off the engine in order to replace a bunch of leaky seals, and just generally clean some things up, make sure that everything is nice and fresh for when we get it back to EJ. So we got the new frame back for EJ's Jeep. We actually sent a couple of our guys all the way out to Ohio to pick this up themselves so we could get it back and start working on it. And this one is in so much better condition than that old one. This has no rust on it and it's going to ensure that EJ can roll down the road being safe and also have a Jeep that's going to last him a good long time. As you can see, a couple of the brackets for the new lift kit have already been welded onto this new frame. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that lift in just a second. We also have the axles back from Regear. I wanna give a big thank you to Linwood over at 4x4 Suspension and Gear. He was able to give these axles a complete rebuild and stuff a set of 456 gears in them. That's gonna help with those big 35 inch tires. That's gonna get them moving. Helping to get them stopped is going to be the big brake kit that we have from Blackmagic Brake Pads. Those are going to be two piston calipers and a larger rotor as well, giving this a lot more stopping force with those big heavy 35s. So now that we have a ton of new parts, it's time to start putting things together instead of taking them apart. And we have a lot of work to do. I'm gonna to help Tony get the motor and trans put in the new frame. As you can see, Tony's been very busy. He has the body mounted back onto the frame and the entire suspension and axles are underneath this Jeep. This thing is a roller. It is really, really coming along. So as far as the suspension, we did something pretty special on this Jeep for EJ. We wanted to give him something that's gonna ride really, really comfortably, but also work really well off-road for him when he does take this thing wheeling. So this is the TerraFlex Low Center of Gravity Long Arm Lift Kit for the TJ. This is a total of five inches of lift, and this is the one that does come with the shocks. So as with any long arm kit, this does have some different mounts for the control arms. You actually get rid of the factory control arm mounts and the factory belly pan in order to mount these long arms. And what 
that really does is flatten out those control arm angles to make a little bit more of a comfortable ride. Now, if you are doing a lot of wheeling on the rocks, long arms, you can end up dragging them over the rocks a lot more, but EJ is going to spend more time probably down in the Pine Barrens in Jersey, not really doing a lot of that wheeling on the rocks, so this long arm system is going to work really well for them, again, on-road and off-road. This does come with the 9550 shocks from TerraFlex, which is a really nice choice for that on-road driving. It's going to be nice and comfortable for them. As you can see, the rear is actually a triangulated four-link, so it gets rid of the track bar. So when he does any sort of articulating off-road, that axle can move straight up and down instead of moving in an arc like a five-link system. Again, it's just a really well-built, really well-designed system that I think EJ is really going to like. We had the axles completely refreshed. These are 456 gears, which would work really well for the tire size that we have on this Jeep. So with a lift kit like this, where you're doing so much customization, there are a couple of additional things you need to change. One of those being the exhaust. So let me show you what we did up there. This Jeep from the factory comes with a total of three different cats. There's a lot going on up here, and this upper control arm does get in the way of that. So what Tony was able to do is cut the factory system, install this piece here, which provides plenty of clearance for that upper control arm, even at full droop. And then all of that leads back into this Flowmaster DVX muffler that dumps right after the skid plate. So we could have gone with an over axle pipe and done a factory style exit, but that's a lot of additional piping that EJ can bang up on the trail. But also you have to weave all of that pipe through all of the stuff that's happening in the back of the Jeep here. This dump makes it a lot easier, a lot cleaner, gives EJ less to bang up on the trail, and it also provides some additional volume, which is a nice addition as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this muffler installed. Now the muffler's in place, we're pretty much done underneath the Jeep here. Everything's been cleaned up, refreshed, we've run all new brake lines under this thing. As you can see, we have a slip yoke eliminator and a new rear drive shaft in place for the new lifted height. Pretty much everything's buttoned up, so we're going to get this thing on the ground and then start working on some of the armor up top. So we just finished installing a lot of the armor on the side of EJ's Jeep and what I just finished up here are the barricade rock sliders. And this is really important when you are doing some off-roading because it protects this rocker area. If you come down an obstacle, a stump, a rock, whatever it might be, it can push the rocker up into the door causing a very expensive repair. So this is going to offer some really nice protection. And the tubes on here also offer a little bit of a step. It's a little high up, it's not going to be the best step, but it isn't going to decrease your ground clearance at all, which is good for when you are going off off-roading, so I think EJ is really going to like these. On the rest of the side of the Jeep, we went with barricade tubular stuff as well, so we have the tubular fenders up front and in the rear. So these are going to open up the wheel well a little bit, providing a little bit of additional clearance, not a ton of additional up travel because Jeep does a really good job with the factory fenders, but it does open up from front to back and really gives the Jeep a very aggressive look. One of the things that EJ really wanted was a little bit of poke. He wanted the tire sticking out a little bit past the fender. That's definitely what we gave him, especially up front here. He's going to have that really wide bulldog stance that he's after. So we're finishing up some of the armor on EJ's Jeep. Of course, we installed front and rear bumper with the tire carrier out back. And for the bumpers, we went with Poison Spider stuff. They make really high quality stuff. We were able to get it in bare steel to get it powder coated to match the rest of the Jeep. And he absolutely wanted a stinger, and I don't think he's gonna be disappointed when he sees this front bumper from Poison Spider. Uh, we topped the bumper off with a rugged ridge winch. EJ does like to go and play in the sand down in the pines. Hopefully he'll do some other off-roading. If he does get himself stuck, he can get himself unstuck with that winch. And we carried the red theme a little bit further outside of the Jeep with those red D-rings. Now out back, also Poison Spider rear bumper. I really like the Poison Spider stuff. The carrier that's on this bumper is incredibly high quality. It's not gonna rattle, it's not gonna move, make any noise. But most importantly, it has a ton of adjustability so we can put that 35 inch tire back here without having any space issues. Obviously we still have some odds and ends to tie up on the tire carrier before that's completely bolted up and then we're going to move on to the lighting. So we just finished up doing a ton of wiring on this Jeep. We added a lot of lighting and a lot of other accessories, all of which required a lot of wiring done. 
but all of that is buttoned up now. So as you can see on the front of the Jeep, we have a 50 inch KC light bar here, a smaller 20 inch on the hood. That was definitely something EJ wanted, some KC lights, so we hooked them up with some LED stuff that's gonna be really, really bright, work really well for them on the trail. But of course, these are not lights to be used on the road. For that, we upgraded his headlights. These are some axial headlights. They have uh, built-in running lights, also turn signals built into them. These are a really nice piece. These are also going to be LED, they're a projector, so again, they're gonna work really, really well, and they're going to be a massive upgrade over the factory sealed beam headlights that come in a TJ. Those are notoriously poor. Now, because of the fenders we installed on this Jeep, we also had to do something with both the marker light and the turn signal. So we went with some small three-quarter inch round LEDs up here, got those wired in. I think they look really clean, will keep them legal, and also keep them safe. Underneath the Jeep, in the wheel wells, and underneath the rocker panels, we have some rock lights under the Jeep. For that, we went with the Oracle rock lights. Those are gonna be a Bluetooth setup that give you a ton of different options. You can dim the lights, you can change the color, they can move to the music. Uh, obviously, you turn them on and off, they're all switched Bluetooth. Now, those aren't the only Bluetooth switch lights we have on the Jeep. We actually set these auxiliary lights up with the new Raxium Bluetooth switching system. So this is the switch right here in my hand. No wires, battery operated, magnetic. You can stick this thing wherever you want. This gives you a total of four switches so we can turn on and off all of our stuff without having to run an additional wire, which makes things really easy. And it also has a full power control box mounted right by the battery here. So if EJ ever does need to change a relay or a fuse, anything like that, it's gonna be really easy to get to. We also upgraded all the lights on the back of EJ's Jeep. The tail lights are also LED to match all of the other LED lights on the exterior of this Jeep. On the inside of the spare tire, there is the round Rugged Ridge third brake light. And because we moved the license plate to the center of the spare tire, we have an off-road only plate light, which also has a built-in third brake light. So when EJ hits the brakes, this thing is going to certainly light up on the back. It's gonna keep him nice and safe, but also make sure that nobody mistakes his Jeep for any other one on the road. One of the things EJ requested for his build was a power soft top. As with most TJ tops that are a little bit older, his soft top was showing a lot of age, a couple of minor tears in it, the windows were pretty well scratched up, so he definitely needed a replacement anyway. And by going with this power top by my top, it makes it a lot easier to put the top up and down. This thing has a ton of engineering that goes into it to make it so that you don't have to remove the rear windows. All you have to do is unlatch it at the top of the windshield, push a button, and it folds back just like any more modern convertible vehicle does, making a lot easier again to put that top up and down so that's something that we were able to get installed for EJ and I think he's gonna be really excited to use this thing when he's driving his Jeep on those nice days. We did a good bit of refreshing and cleaning up of the interior, but we also did a lot of modernizing at EJ's request. One of the things that he wanted was a few more creature comforts, so we did add some power windows and power locks to this Jeep. We tied the locks right into a remote start and an alarm system, so this has a lot more creature comforts in it than the TJ did even when it rolled off the assembly line. Power locks and power windows weren't even an option, but they're installed in this Jeep now. We also installed a new radio in this Jeep, so we swapped out the head unit as well as all four speakers. We added a sub and a sub box in the back and an amplifier, so this thing is going to sound as good as it looks. We also put a CB radio in the Jeep, that way when EJ is cruising on the trails, he can communicate with all of his buddies. So we just got finished tightening down a couple of the bolts on the seats here. Obviously, these seats have been completely refreshed as well as the carpeting in this Jeep. We went ahead and recovered EJ's factory TJ seats with a vinyl and red stitching. It's gonna hold up really well for them. These are also have brand new foam, so these things are better than new. We did front seats, rear seats, we even did the sun visors and the sound bar, so it gives it a really cohesive look and really able to carry that black and red stitching from the inside to the outside, which is something that EJ really wanted. We are going to top off the carpeting with a set of barricade floor mats. That way it keeps everything looking good for a good long time. I do want to give a big thank you to Poison Spider, Terraflex, and KC. All of them donated parts to help make this build possible. Now, the last couple of steps here are taking this thing to get an alignment, give it a little bit of an on-road shakedown, and finally deliver back to EJ. So we just got the Jeep back from the alignment shop. I'm just gonna take it on a quick shakedown run and see how everything feels before we get it back to EJ.
And one of the first things you notice about this Jeep when you get in it is how comfortable it is. We were able to install these new seats in the Jeep mostly to carry the black and red theme from the inside to the outside, but these seats are very, very comfortable as well having all new foam. The next thing you notice when you fire it up and start driving it is how much of a powerful feeling it has even though it has big 35s on it. Now, usually when you go with the big 35 inch tire, you can lose a lot of that pep, but by putting gears in it, give it back uh, a lot of that drivability, and being that this is EJ's daily driver, that was something that was really important for us to give back to him. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for the shakedown run. The Jeep feels great. So, time to reveal this thing to EJ, see how he likes it. So this is it, it's finally time to give the Jeep back to EJ. We're here at Turn 5, our parent company's block party. Tons of people here having a great time. I cannot wait to see EJ's reaction to his new Jeep. Thank you everybody for coming out today. It's awesome to have so many people out and be a part of what's gonna happen here today for Earl. He wanted his wish to be for turn five to overhaul his Jeep. I couldn't be more proud of our team for the amount of time, energy, and effort they put in. And I have no doubt that Earl is gonna be impressed. And it couldn't go to a nicer, more deserving kid. I was able to speak with EJ early in this process about really what he wanted his Jeep to look like. With it being an older Jeep, it did need a ton of work, more than we even thought in the beginning, uh, but it was a very rewarding build. It was a lot of fun. You guys ready to pull the cover off? Yeah. Are you ready? I'm more than ready. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, go! <laughs> Let's give a round of applause. What do you think? It's everything I could have won. <laughs> you want to start it up, EJ? Yeah. All right, go for it. <laughs> Now that you see it in the flesh, what's your favorite part? Uh, probably a train horn and a convertible top. Yeah. It's amazing. I, like It's everything I could have asked for. So that's going to do it for this very special episode of Throttle Out. We finally got to give the Jeep back to EJ. Man, I hope you enjoy it so much. Thanks for letting us work on it. Hey guys, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can check out other great videos like this one and some of the best Jeep content out there.